Welcome back everybody to Flatirons Tuning. We're here in the shop and there's been a lot of stuff in the shop that has brought some things to mind and I think it's time. It's time to talk about your air oil separator, have kind of like that, that tough love conversation uh, about air oil separators. If you're, if you're new to the channel, we've done a lot of, uh, a lot of testing and, and, and made a lot of videos about uh, the Subaru PCV system, how the PCV system works, catch cans work, how, how air oil separators work, and what kind of pushed us down the road to, to do this investigation is just that it just seems like even though there's there's a commonly held school of thought that there is a solution out there which is an air oil separator, it just really seems like it's not as much of a solution as it, it, as it could or it should be. There's, there's a lot of problems that crop up. And we've, we've been working on a car here in the shop, uh, Spencer's car that had an engine failure. And, um, you know, it's just, it's kind of brought everything back to light. We've had a lot of discussions in the shop, uh, once again, about, you know, air oil separators and, and where they work, where they don't. And uh, kind of rung home the point to me that it was time to have this conversation. And let's just, let's just, let's just get it all out in the open and, and um, well, let, start a discussion, if nothing else. Uh, before I dive into it, just want to say, you know, if you like this content, if you like what we're putting out on this channel, please do like and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a ton. The other thing is the very best way to support us, we can keep coming back and making this content for you, is to head over to flatironstuning.com. That's our website. Anything that we have that you might need, that support goes a long, long way to letting us come back and keep making this content for you. So, with all that being said, let's dive into it. Um, let's start with what the kind of common school of thought is between a catch can, an air oil separator, and a dry sump oiling system. Uh, I would say that the common school of thought right now is that catch cans, either they, they don't really do much, there's not really many good kits, or and or you know it's really hard to figure out how to plumb them to actually get them to work properly. Um, it's th commonly thought that really, if, if you're looking at a catch can, really an aerial separator is a much better solution. That's really much more of the go-to, and really it is a solution. You know, there's there's, I've seen many posts out there on the interwebs saying, you know, it, uh, an air oil separator is a must for every Subaru. Like the, the first thing you would do is would put an air oil separator in your car no matter what, even if it's bone stock. And then when it comes to dry sumps, well, I, I'd say that the common school of thought out there for dry sumps is, well, sure, they're great, but they're crazy expensive, way too expensive, and way too complicated. It's just not worth it. Really, just just stick with an, with an air oil separator. That's all that you need. It gets the job done. Um, and that, that's, kind of, that's kind of where we are. And I would say that pretty much... I would say that on each one of these points, except for maybe the catch can. Catch can, is there a good catch can kit? Not really. Um, the, the dual catch can kit from Killer B for the new, the new WRXs, really getting there. Um, the radium kit, it's okay, but it's not great. There's really not a really good solution out there. But I would disagree with the, with the assessment of the air oil separator and, and of the dry sump. Um, where does that come from? Well, it comes from you know all of the, all of the testing that we've done monitoring uh, crankcase pressure and, and we started even looking at crankcase pressure because of some of the issues that we were having with with blow by with was seeing the oil volume that was flowing into catch cans and all the trouble that people were having with air oil separators now sure some of the air oil separator issues stem to problems with drainage uh, you know we just had you know now we have the three my drain hose which is which is a great step forward for sure um, but there you know there's still some problems, and there's there's a lot of weird things, you know, towards the fringes, especially as you start to make more power, um, start tracking the cars, where you're running into seemingly odd issues with the air oil separators, and that's that's again where I think we need to have a conversation. What's normal? Let's define normal. You know, for for a street driven car, for a 100% stock car, um, really you should have very little oil moving through the PCV system. Your oil consumption should be negligible. Uh, most likely, in which case, like if there is any kind of oil movement, it's going to be very little. And if you want to catch that oil movement and pre prevent it from getting into the engine, catch cans should suffice. Again, properly set up, and that that is that is a challenge in that area. But really, for for a stock car, for a daily driven car that's lightly modified, an aero separator really, I mean, it shouldn't be absolutely necessary. You know, you really a, a catch can should be necessary. As you start modifying the car more you know, it, to the point where it's beyond what a catch can could fix. Well, I, I think the part of the conversation that's missing is what, what, what do you need to move to if a catch can is insufficient? The answer is actually a dry sump. It's not an air oil separator, it's a dry sump. 
because that is the solution to the problem. The arrow separator is not a solution to the problem. But for a streetcar, it's not an option to move to a Dryson. Why? Well, it is, the cost just doesn't make sense for a streetcar, for one. For two, there's a lot of safety considerations when you're, when you're taking the oiling system out from underneath the engine and moving you know, a big oil tank into a car. You're putting lines from the engine bay into the car. You know, there's just, it, it can work for a race car. It's really, it's just not recommended for a streetcar. So that's where the ARL separate comes in. It's, it's kind of a stopgap measure. It is not a solution. It is, it is an improvement that works well enough for, for most street-driven cars. Where it gets tricky is when you move into track cars, especially if you're moving or making high power and moving fast using sticky tires on a track car. Really, that's where, again, the solution is the dry sump, not the aerosol separate. Um, and, you know, kind of the proof of the pudding of that is, you know, there's a lot of guys, once you start making good power, once you start, you know, getting a lot of cornering G loads, um, where you start having all sorts of interesting issues with aerosol separators. Um, you know, if, if you're now running two aerosol separators into a catch can, you're the person that we're talking to. If you've got three aerial separators into two catch cans and they're all tied into a 55 gallon drum of oil in your trunk, wow, um, thanks, for, thanks for coming. We're gonna help you. We're gonna get you set up. But that's, that's really where the dry sun comes in because this is the solution. And for really any track car where you possibly can, the dry sump is, is really the way to go. So why, why has there been such an emphasis on air oil separators? Have you, been, have you been lied to? Have you been misled to thinking that, the dry, or that, a, that an air oil separator is, is what you need to put on you know, every Subaru? The answer to that is no. We as a community, basically, we just got it wrong. You know, we misunderstood the problem. The way that you, when you have a problem, the way that you understand a problem, that dictates how you come up with a solution to the problem. The problem that we, to this point, have really understood is it's an oil flow problem. There's oil moving through the PCV system, and that's bad. That causes all sorts of problems, and we've talked to that at, at length. So all of these solutions, except for the dry sump, are built around addressing it from that standpoint, from capturing the oil that's moving through the P PCV system, keeping it in the sump, preventing it from getting into the inlet path, and, and that's... That's, that's the mistake that we made. What we failed to do is to ask ourselves, well, why is the oil moving through the PCV system in the first place? And the reason is, is crankcase pressure. It's a crankcase pressure problem, not an oil movement problem. The oil movement is a symptom. It is not the problem in and of itself. And so that's where you know, these solutions, they were founded on an in, incomplete picture of what the problem was. And that's where you can run into these French cases where they just, they just fail. Uh, they just don't work the way that they should. So when I say that an air oil separator might not solve the problem, it might not be addressing the problem correctly, what are some of the symptoms that you would see if that was the case? Well, the first, first and foremost, the biggest one is if you have an air oil separator installed and you're still using oil. Um, and because an air oil separator is designed to catch all that liquid oil as it's, as it's moving through the PCV system, if you are using any measurable amount of oil after you've installed your air oil separator, that is, that is a red flag that there is something going on, um, that, that there is some kind of an issue that needs to be addressed. If this was a solution, you would put it on and you wouldn't get into these fringe cases where you start using oil, you, you keep seeing oil that's moving through the inlet path, getting into the intercooler and the throttle line and so forth, but that happens. All right, so. Tough love, what is the cause for this? Well, it can be just an improperly designed air oil separator. Best example I will give you is if you got one of those AOSs that fits on the oil cap, yeah, get rid of that thing. Um, we, in our crankcase pressure video, we, we've shown how problematic those things can be. But an improperly designed air oil separator, first and foremost, can cause these problems. Two, plumbing problems. If you have issues with the plumbing uh, of, of your air oil separator, specifically the drain, and that's where something like the 3MI AOS drain hose comes in to improve the draining function of the air oil separator. But, but any kind of pinching off of the lines um, that, that basically connect the air oil separator to the car, that can cause a lot of these issues where you, you, you're still building up a crankcase pressure which moves a lot more volume of oil or preventing the AOS from draining, and that moves the oil in through the inlet path. And three, uh, time. Time is kind of your enemy, and that's the other problem with air oil separators that, that I think really has to be discussed. 
is there, there's a lot of the thought of, you know, you put on an air oil separator because once you install it, that's it, you're done. Because any, any oil that it catches, it just sends back, so you don't have to worry about it. Catch can, well, that takes a lot more maintenance. Initially, you know, with a proper install, yeah, that's the case. The problem is with an air oil separator, as time goes on, as, as your, your hoses get older, as there's a lot more vibration through the engine bay, you go through heat cycles and so forth, lots of weird stuff can happen to AOS plumbing that can cause problems. And with an air oil separator, yeah, it's, it's less month-to-month -month uh, maintenance than a catch can, but you really still have to kind of monitor and keep your eye on it. You know, if you've got something like this, like a, a, an atmospheric or venting uh, competition series AOS, and you see any signs of liquid oil coming out of the vent, that's a real big flag that like, okay, something is wrong. Um, you know, you, you need to go in there and check your plumbing and all that sort of thing to make sure that it's functioning properly. It's something I would say probably once a year, you wanna go in there and check your lines, make sure that everything's fitting properly, make sure you're not seeing any signs of seepage around any of the lines that connect to the valve covers, uh, the, the engine and so forth. Um, because that can cause problems. And last, well, you have an engine problem. Specifically, something like a ring land failure. Um, an air oil separator can kind of cover up for a ring land failure, make it seem less problematic for, for some period of time. The problem is going to get progressively worse, and you're just going to start moving a lot more oil through the air oil separator, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something that you can't ignore for much for that, for that long. But it can, an air oil separator can kind of mask those early symptoms of having an engine problem like that. If you have an engine problem, really there's, there's none of these solutions, not even a dry sump necessarily that would solve that. You really need to get into the engine, find out what the problem is, fix it, rebuild it, get, get the engine healthy again, and then you can kind of reevaluate and start over again. So the biggest takeaway that I want to give you from this is basically that the, the thing that's going on here, it is a crankcase pressure issue and not, not an oil movement issue. The oil movement is a symptom because I think as a community, once we, once we can move to that and start addressing it as a pressure issue, not an oil movement issue, there's going to be a lot better solutions out there than just you know the air, air oil separators that we have currently. I mean, in my opinion, I think there's a solution for a good catch can setup addressing the crankcase pressure issue that will get a catch can to work as well, if not better, than an air oil separator does because it's going to actually properly keep everything in this all the oil in the sump where it should be. Um, but that's for down the road. To the dry sump. I wanted, I wanted to dispel these, these thoughts of, of the cost of a dry sump being too expensive and uh, it being too complicated. Um, I will say first off, yes, it is expensive. I mean, average cost to put a dry sump like this Roger Clark uh, four stage dry sump on your car is probably gonna be about something in the $7,000 range. That's for the pump, all the tubing, the tank, uh, and everything to get it up and running. Is it complicated? Yes, but you know, we can you get it wrong? Absolutely, we did, but you can figure it out. And once you figure it out, the difference of, of having a car with a proper dry sump on it compared to something with an air oil separator or two is massive. Um, the thing that with the dry sump that has to be mentioned and that you have to keep in mind is it's actually solving two problems, not just one. And they're the two huge problems in the oiling system with the Subaru. One, yes, is oil movement through the PCV system. Because with the dry sump, since you have scavenge pumps, a vacuum pump that is actually pulling that crankcase pressure out, you, you remove the entire PCV system. You, you block it off entirely. That, that is one of the, the keys of success with the dry sump system is that you, you basically have no more issues with the PCV system and with oil moving through the PCV because there isn't one. Um, setting up proper venting for the tank, as we've talked about in the past, that's what we got wrong. And once, but once you get it right, then, then the dry sump oiling system it is rock solid from, from that standpoint. The other thing that the dry sump solves, which not, neither of these do, short of you know, trying to ensure that you keep the proper volume of oil in your sump, is oil delivery to the engine. You have rock steady oil pressure with the dry sump no matter what you're doing, no matter how fast you're going, you know, what your coring loads are. I mean, that's, that's why race cars have dry sumps. Um, and because it solves those two problems, the thing you have to factor in is, well, Yes, the setup cost is expensive for this oil pump, but if you're talking about you know, a fancy oil pump that's maybe $500, an aerial separator that's $500, a fancy oil pan that's, well, let's call it $800, maybe something, even going so far as an AccuSump that's uh, you know, kind of a stopgap again uh, to, to a, a dry sump. I mean, you can easily be in a few thousand dollars for all of these band-aids that you're using to try and you know, sure up 
the oiling system, but you're not going to get anywhere near the performance that you get with the dry sump. And because you have that reliable performance, you're going to have much better engine longevity. So yes, it's an investment up front, but over the life of your car, over the life of your engine, you're going to get a significant savings because you're not going to have to dive into the engine bore. That's why, that's why the dry sump, I think, gets, has gotten a bad rap. And I think in the super community especially, well, really just for the race cars, like if you have a race car with a cage in it and you're running slicks and you're making decent power and you want to know that you have good oil pressure, that's where the dry sump comes in. So I think if we, if we as a community think about the oiling problem with our, with our cars from that standpoint, from the standpoint that the problem is a crankcase pressure problem, not an oil movement problem, and accept the fact that like we, we have issues, but if for race cars, the dry sump really is the best solution, we're going to have much more reliable, much better results. And, uh, and ultimately, hopefully that will do a little bit to take some of the wind out of this argument that Subarus are unreliable um, and that sort of thing, so that you know, there's more Subarus out there competing and being successful, and it, it will just all have a lot more fun because our car is going to be a lot more reliable to, to boot. So I wanted to have the conversation. I hope that's helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you dif disagree. Um, and you know everything that we talked about here is for sale on FlatironsTuning.com. If you've got any questions, got a ton of videos. I'll, I'll put some links to those in the, in the description below. Um, we've done our best to kind of like get in, figure out what's going on, and put the information out there for you. Um, and we're, we're just going to continue doing that. Um, so if you got any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments below. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll just keep working on this problem and keep finding better and better solutions. So thanks so much for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.